But Tampa Bay Buccaneers secondary was flat out embarrassed on Sunday against the Houston Texans. And that's not just coming from me. That's also coming from Hall of Fame defensive back Rondé Barber. That and more on today's episode of Locked on Bucks. You are Locked on Buccaneers, your daily Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Bucks fans, and welcome to this episode of Locked on Bucks, your podcast, daily podcast, covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks so much for making Locked on Bucks your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget that you can subscribe for free on YouTube or wherever you're getting your podcast, and you can follow me on Twitter at dharrison82. I'm your host, David Harrison, credential member of the media, covering your Tampa Bay Buccaneers for BucksGameDay.com, a part of Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation, and we, as a show, are here with you Monday through Friday along with our everydayers, everydayers. We greatly appreciate your continued support for the program. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bets. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. On today's episode of Locked on Bucks, we're talking about Todd Bowles uh, and talking about what Todd is talking about. And we're stashing and trashing some things from week nine. But first embarrassing might be the easiest description of the Buccaneers defense on Sunday in week nine, but it's also the perfect one as well. And it's coming in part from hall of fame, uh, cornerback Tampa Bay Buccaneers legend, Rondé Barber, who recently said on 33rdteam.com when he was asked about what he saw in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers secondary, he said, quote, a lot of confusion, a lot of, I don't want to say they're not coached well, but they do things. When you break down all those touchdowns, you're going to look at a secondary that doesn't look coached well. It's things that I look at and say, okay, that's simple. But on the field, it's not translating for this team. To give up that many yards in a Todd Bowles defense, something that he takes a lot of pride in, is embarrassing. For me, this was an embarrassing watch from a guy that studies a lot of Bucks film. When I go back to watch it on film, whenever I can stomach this, it's probably going to hit even harder. They look like the worst secondary in football, and they have one of the best safeties in football in Antoine Winfield Jr. I know they had some injuries back there, but if this team's going to make any kind of push in the NFC South, they have to fix their issues, and they have to fix them fast. Again, that is Hall of Fame cornerback, Rondé Barber. So not only is James saying that the secondary got toasted, not only am I saying that the secondary got roasted, Rondé Barber is saying that this secondary was flat out embarrassing in week nine uh, against the Houston Texans. In that conversation, again, on 33rdteam.com, he also specifies uh, one specific touchdown, the touchdown in the fourth quarter to tight end Dalton Schultz. Uh, He kind of explains it a little bit. I'm going to explain it a little bit deeper here on the program. But again, it's Carlton Davis, the third, uh, the number one cornerback on this team. And and, and, and by many measures, supposed to be the best defensive back in the secondary. Although I think that most of us, if not all of us, have pretty much gone onto the bandwagon that Antoine Winfield Jr. is indeed the best corner or the best defensive back rather in the secondary, perhaps the best defender pound for pound. Uh, on the defense now, Levante David obviously would have something to say about that. Vita Vea as well, but that's a good that's a good argument to try to have, right? And here's the bottom line. So I went back through and I went to the I went to the coach's tape. So Rondé talked about it. So I went back to the coach's tape because I want to break this down as fine tune it uh, as I could for you guys here on today's episode. And and again, if you're new to the program, you may not know this. If you're an everyday or you already know this, we've explained it before. Because of licensing rules, we cannot show you NFL tape, film, replays on the show. I know some other shows do it. They do it because they either don't care or they're not aware of the rules. And the NFL doesn't always go after those guys. We are a little bit of a different breed. We're owned by a major media company, corporation. So we don't violate those rules, guys. So I'm going to describe it to you the best I can. And if you want to go back and look at it, if you've got NFL Plus, when the All-22 drops on there, you can go look at it. If you want to go back to the game broadcast, I'm sure you can see many of the things that I'm about to tell you uh, here. Or you might just remember because it might just be uh, burned into your brain at this point. So this play... Touchdown pass to tight end Dalton Schultz comes in the fourth quarter, 14 minutes, 11 seconds remaining uh, when the score happens. Quarterback C.J. Stroud of the Houston Texans hits tight end Dalton Schultz for a nine-yard touchdown score. The game was tied 23 at the time. This score and the two-point conversion being successful after it made the score 30-23 to in favor of the Houston Texans. Now, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers come out in quarters coverage. That means Zion McCollum, the right defensive side cornerback, Antoine Winfield Jr., the safety, Dee Delaney, the safety, and Carlson Davis, the left side defensive cornerback, are all taking deep zone drops, 
into the end zone with quarter with one quarter of the field each that they're responsible for in their zone. So Carlton Davis in this design, he is responsible for the left quarter of the field. So everything from the numbers on the field to the to the sideline on that side of the field is what he is responsible for on this play. Houston comes out with three receivers and one tight end, the one tight end being Dalton Schultz. And they got one running back lined up to the left side of CJ Stroud, who is in shotgun. So it's 11 personnel look with or it's 11 personnel package with a 10 personnel look. Dalton Schultz is split off, uh, not wide, but he's he's reduced, but he's split off the off, off the uh, the uh, the offensive line. He's not in line, basically standing up right on the offensive right side, the side that Davis and Delaney are covering. Right. So defensive left side, offensive right side. The Texans running flat seven variant route combination with the inside receiver running kind of a, a, an inside stop and go outside. But they turn the outside and and uh, but turn towards the outside. And Schultz is running a seven route or a corner route uh, to the outside of the formation with this combination. You're looking for one of two things. If you're Houston, Texas quarterback, CJ Stroud, either the outside corner route comes open, which is what ends up happening, or the deep zones go too deep because of matching deep routes into the end zone coming from the left side, leaving the underneath receiver with an opportunity to catch the ball and run into the end zone after the deep routes, clear the defensive backside of the area. Houston also has running back leaking backside as a final option in hopes that the defense is completely vacated that side of the, of the field uh, and the deep because of the deep routes that are going from left to right at the snap because of the alignment alone Davis has outside leverage on Schultz and he has no need to turn his hips before Schultz hits his break because of the end zone boundary behind him so really Carlton Davis has the advantage here because everything is staying in front of him he knows everything's going to stay in front of him playing in quarters he also knows that D Delaney the safety to the inside of him has that zone on the inside of him on the other side of the numbers. So he's got no reason to really worry about what's going on there. Davis inexplicably drops into his zone while allowing Schultz to attack his leverage and come straight at him instead of maintaining his outside leverage while Dee Delaney maintains the inside leverage. It's so clearly going to be open at this point for the Houston Texans because of Davis's lack of leverage usage that Stroud is throwing the ball to Dalton Schultz before he ever even finishes his stem and gets into his break. And because of Davis's drop, Schultz's stem right at the chest at Carlton Davis that Davis allows to maintain his target point and the anticipatory, anticipatory throw and also gives C.J. Stroud some credit. He throws the ball flat so that Dalton Schultz can get flat and break away from Carlton Davis even more. It's exactly where it, it needs to go, and it's an easy touchdown for the Houston Texans on a fourth down play. Literally every other route on that play is covered perfectly. The only off route, the only coverage bust that the Buccaneers experience on this play is Carlton Davis. And that's exactly where CJ Stroud goes with the ball. The worst part is that before the ball is snapped, you can see D Delaney. Again, if you're watching the all 22, you can see D Delaney motioning to Carlton Davis. You're going to need to get wide. Carlton Davis ignores his teammate doesn't part doesn't cover the the area of the field that he's supposed to gives up his leverage and he gives up a touchdown there's nothing fancy about this play the Houston Texans didn't do anything crazy they didn't do anything fancy nothing to cause confusion it's perhaps the most straightforward play you can have in that situation if you're an offense and Davis blew it because he simply didn't do his job he didn't cover his own properly didn't listen to communication from his teammate that's the bottom line obviously we're going to want to trash this week's secondary performance. I'm not saying Carlton Davis is the only guy who blew it, but on that play specifically and on some others, he blew it significantly. That's going to need to go in the trash, but it goes a bit deeper than that, I'm afraid. Stash it and trash it coming up next on today's episode of Locked on Bucks, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked on Bucks is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. It is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports because it's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch your winnings roll in. With the basketball season here, you can now pick combo projections across football and basketball from the specials league a league created specifically for combo projections that includes two or more players from different sports or leagues i play three prize picks contests every single week i play one for thursday night football and i play one for the commanders game and one for the buccaneers game my three picks for the buccaneers game this last weekend were tampa bay quarterback baker mayfield for more than 253.5 yards of total offense mike evans for more than 55.5 receiving yards and texans quarterback cj stroud for more than seven and a half rushing yards. While the Bucs lost, 
I won $25 on that $5 entry, and I'm looking to do it again this weekend when the Buccaneers host the Tennessee Titans. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use the promo code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that's promo code locked on NFL at prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL for a uh, first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks daily fantasy sports made easy. Thanks for making Locked On Bucks your first listen or view today and every day, every day. Or thanks for coming through on a regular basis like you do. Football season is here and Locked On is kicking up our covers with Locked On NFL kickoff live every Friday. Locked On will go live at 2 p.m. Eastern on every Locked On NFL YouTube channel. Your host, Tanitra Batiste, Jarvis Davis, and Kyle Krabs are breaking down every game to help you with your team's matchup, your fantasy lineups, your betting angles and more. Plus, get in-depth local analysis from our stable of NFL hosts across the country who know these teams better than anyone else. Find Locked On NFL Kickoff Live every Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern on any Locked On NFL YouTube channel. Time to stash it and trash it. And even though James isn't here, he sent me what he wants to stash from Week 9, and he sent me what he wants to trash from Week 9, so we still have a little James Yarko flavor to this episode of Locked On Bucks. First stash I'm going to bring up Running back Rashad White, fellow Arizona State Sun Devil, representing on Sunday week nine, unfortunately in a loss for his team. 24 combined touches for Rashad White, 119 yards of offense, two touchdowns, uh, great performance by Rashad White, but even more great usage of Rashad White by Dave Canales. And and I drove uh, eight, eight and a half hours from New England Sunday night into Monday morning. Uh, returning back from the Commanders game, so I had plenty of time. I turned on the the Buccaneers game, listened to it in the background because I'm not going to watch it while I'm driving. Eventually, was able to watch the game, so I got two two runs through this game. And I know that the broadcast was even talking about how well the Buccaneers and offense coordinator Dave Canales, quarterback Baker Mayfield, was using running back Rashad White in this game. And they said something that made me happy, and hopefully it made you happy, especially if you're fantasy savvy and Rashad White's available on your waiver wire, go pick up the young running back because they expect, and I would think that this is the type of usage you're going to see with Rashad White moving down further into the season. And certainly it was very effective and it was very, uh, it was a very effective part of what the Tampa Bay Buccaneers did. Now I know not everybody came out of the game loving everything that Dave Canales called from as a play caller. And I know not everybody loves what Baker Mayfield did as the Buccaneers quarterback. And I get that hundred percent, but the bottom line is the the increased usage by Rashad White can only lead to good things for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and other players like Kadon and like Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Trey Palmer, all those guys. 24 combined touches again, 119 yards of offense, two touchdowns, the second most carries in a single game in his career, ties the second highest rushing yards output in his entire career in his first multi-touchdown game of his young career. So stashing the Rashad White usage uh, by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Trashing the pass coverage. It's low-hanging fruit, but this is a tree that needs to get plucked dry. Uh, and, and obviously, when I say pass coverage, I'm just talking about the lack of pass coverage. Four Tampa Bay Buccaneers defensive backs finished week nine with pass coverage grades below 50, according to Pro Football Focus. Jamel Dean, who I know, he only played part of the game, got injured, had to leave. Hope, hopefully, uh, he gets to feeling better soon. But he leaves the game with a 49.3 grade, according to PFF. He actually, of this group of four, has the best grade of all of these guys. Ryan Neal, 36.4 PFF grade in pass coverage. Zion McCollum, who came in for Jamal Dean, 29.3. Carlton Davis, the third, another 29.3. Your two cornerbacks on the outside, Zion McCollum, Carlton Davis, third, finished with 29 sub-30 grades or your two main cornerbacks for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. D. Delaney and Christian Izian, they finished below 60, but above 49, below, above 50 anyway. Only Antoine Winfield Jr. had a grade above 70. He finishes with a 71.5. Uh, I mean, the, the only one above 60 and the only one above 70, Antoine Winfield Jr. Uh, Carl Davis alone, look, I know we're picking on Carl Davis out here, but listen, he's the guy. You know what I mean? Zion McCollum, but he has a bad game, but you can kind of, and not to this extent, but if you really want to, you guys say, look, he's not supposed to be out there starting uh, where Jamel Dean is anyway. That's that's an injury thing. D Delaney is getting put in there. He's he's normally a backup. He's getting put in there uh, for the brunt of the work here because Ryan Neal has been struggling. So you can even give him a little bit of pass. But the thing about it is uh, D Delaney is not even the worst 
the worst guy here. He's, he's making his first start of the season. He's not even the worst guy here. But Carlson Davis is supposed to be one of your anchors. He and Antoine Winfield Jr. are supposed to be the best. Jamel Dean, second best cornerback, arguably, you know, fighting for that number one spot, right? Carlton Davis alone gave up eight catches on nine targets, 125 yards of offense against him, a long pass of 31 yards, and he surrendered three touchdowns against the Houston Texans, including the game-winning score and the score against Salton Schultz that we just broke down uh, in segment one. He also missed a tackle, and he had two penalties called against him. He allowed a perfect 158.3 quarterback rating to rookie quarterback C.J. Stroud. And yes, I'm a Buckeye fan, but listen, guys, C.J. Stroud is not that great of a quarterback at this time in his career. He's good. He's solid. He's been a really good rookie. Don't get me wrong. He's not a 158.3 QBR guy against your best cover corner in the secondary. He set a rookie record for passing yards in a single game. Carlton Davis, a big part of that. Moving on to James's stash, uh, the continued growth of rookie defensive lineman, Kalijah Kansi. James points out they made a lot of positive plays in week nine against Houston Texans. He seems to be getting better at shedding blocks and getting pressure on the quarterback. Came away with the second sack of his young season. And given the fact of all the injuries he's been going through, and you hate those injuries for him, but considering what he's doing despite those injuries, Certainly very impressive and that you can physically see the improvements out of Kalaja Kansi from week to week and that this kid might be very, very special. Vita Vea, Kalaja Kansi might be a very special duo on this Buccaneers defensive line for a long, long time to come. James is trash. Sticking on the offensive side of things, target shares is where James wants to go. 11 total targets between star wide receivers Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. It should be double that. If not more, James says, uh, Baker Mayfield threw the ball 30 times. 11 of those went to Evans and Godwin. That is a 37% snap share. And I'm sure that most people would agree. You want to see at least 50%, uh, not snap share, target share. You want at least 50% of those targets to go to Godwin and Evans combined. Kate Otten and Trey Palmer combined for 13 targets. That's 43%. Your tight end and your third receiver are combining for more targets than your two star receivers. And I love Kate Otten. I think Trey Palmer's got a lot of potential, but that should not be happening. 34, we talk about the best receiver duos in the NFL. Most people are going to tell you A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, probably the top two, probably the best receiving duo in the National Football League this year. 34% is the lowest target share that they have had in a single game this season. They've only gone below 40% twice all year long, 65% is the most they've had in a single game, and they've got several games over 50% for the team. Meanwhile, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers' top duo has yet to hit a 50% target share in a single week this entire season. Chris Godwin, furthermore, leads the Buccaneers with 62 targets on the team. That's 22nd in the league and would be the second most targets on several NFL teams, including the Chicago Bears, the Carolina Panthers, the Arizona Cardinals, the Indianapolis Colts, and the New Orleans Saints. In fact, the Saints have two receivers, Chris Olave and Michael Thomas, who have as many targets or more targets than the Buccaneers' leading receiver in targets. You have to feed your stars. You have to get them going. You need to trash this limited target share for Chris Evans, Chris Evans, Chris Godwin, and Mike Evans. That's Sasha and Trasha for today's episode. Todd Bowles was talking about some things after the game. We're talking about Todd coming up next on today's episode of Locked On Bucks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team. Every day. Today's episode of Locked On Bucks brought to you by FanDuel. Get winning this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get a $150 bonus bet, $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 bucks if your team wins. The Bucks, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, are opening the week as one and a half point favorites to handle the Tennessee Titans at home this weekend in week 10. Uh, and they are currently plus 550 odds to win the NFC South. If you think the Buccaneers are going to beat the Tennessee Titans, go ahead and hit that money line bet. Don't take the spread bet. Take the money line bet for the Bucs to beat the Titans. And if they do, uh, we at least $5, a $5 money line bet. If they do, if they win, you get $150 in bonus bets. If you think, if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time than now to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use. And there's a wide range of betting options, including money lines, of course, but you also got spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Kick off the NFL season right. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Final segment here of Locked on Bucks. I'm with David Harrison talking to you here on a Tuesday following uh, arguably the worst loss the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have suffered in quite some time uh, for many reasons. On 
Soup Monday, Todd Bowles, head coach of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, spoke to media as he does every day after a game, win or lose. Um, and he was asked several questions. Here's a couple of things that Todd Bowles said, and here's what I think about these things, okay? Uh, he was asked about the reason for communication problems on the field. And this is probably the most popular quote from today's press conference. Here's what Todd said about the communication. Quote, it's really not all communication. Some people are just busting, and it's just as simple as that. We're saying communication, and we're putting a bow on it, but certain people have to play better. It's really that simple. It's not even really a communication issue for the most part, and it wasn't yesterday. We just have to play better. We can say it's communication all we want, but some things don't even require communication. It requires playing better. It is things they've done a million times, and they just got to go do it. Uh, they've just got to do it, end quote. Um, I like the honesty from Todd Bowles. He's not calling out a specific player, and that's okay. That's our job, not his job. But I like the honesty from Todd Bowles. I'm not leaning on the communication thing because that is – he said it perfectly. That's You put a bow on some of these execution issues by saying, oh, it's a lack of communication. But we just talked about this play that Rondé Barber talked about on the 33rd team. And I broke it down just a little bit deeper. And, again, I told you, somebody noticed on the 22, when you get access to the 22, if you get access to the 22, look it up yourself. You literally see D. Delaney throwing his hand out towards Carlton Davis, telling him, signaling to him, you're going to have to get wide. Make sure you get wide. Carlton Davis completely ignores it. That's not a communication issue. The communication is there. The players are saying, here's what I see. Here's what I know is going to about to happen based on our assignment, based on your responsibility, my responsibility. Here's what I think you need to do. I am telling you this as a teammate that wants to be successful with you. That's not a lack of communication. That is a lack of a player doing what they're supposed to do. Certain players have to play better is what Todd Bowles said. That certain player in this instance, Carlton Davis is number, number one. He is the number one player that has got to play better because I'll tell you right now, if I'm Will Levis of the Tennessee Titans and I'm watching this game tape, I'm looking for 24 and that's ridiculous. No quarterback should be coming into a match against Tampa Bay Buccaneers looking to target number 24. But if I can get D hop on number 24, I'm taking that matchup all day long and Carlton Davis can, can, you know, given his history and everything else, he's done a lot of really good things, but this is the game that's going to stand out the most. And the Tennessee Titans are absolutely crazy. If they don't come out and want to say, Hey, look, let's find out. This is not just a one-time thing, especially in zone coverage. If we can get you to identify zone coverage and you're actually in zone coverage, I'm absolutely going to target you because again, not only that play to tall Dalton Schultz, but the game winning touchdown and tank Dell Carlton Davis is that they're in quarters coverage again. D Delaney is inside. Carlton Davis is outside. And honestly, I think it was drawn up perfectly because I don't know if Demeco, Demico Ryans was asked about this, but I would almost say they ran this play thinking, you know what? Carlton Davis is going to break too far outside too soon. And we can take advantage of that because they run two, uh, 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 seven or two, nine routes right through those two zones in the quarter. One at D Delaney, one at Carlton Davis and Carlton Davis completely opens up and just gives tank Dell everything on the inside while D Delaney is matching up with another receiver on the inside. That's why it was so open. And I, I'm, I'm, I would be not surprised at all to find out that the Houston Texans coaching staff specifically was like, you know what guys, we bet you this is what is about to happen. And when you, and you guys have seen defensive backs do these rotation drills, drop back, turn flow, run with the ball. Carlton Davis looks like a newborn doe when he tries to break on that ball. It's, 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 it just shows you how out of sync Carlton Davis was Week nine against Houston Texans. So the Tennessee Titans, if I'm Will Levis, I'm trying that, man. I'm targeting that. I'm looking for Carlton Davis. I'm trying to see, is this a one-off or is this how Carlton Davis is going to play right now in this season? Next question, the Todd Bowles, uh, we're going to cover. Next thing the Todd Bowles said that we're going to cover, why the defense is playing so much zone coverage. Here's what Todd Bowles had to say. Quote, the last series, you're going to play zone when the game is on the line so the clock can run out. You're not going to sit there and play man to give them a chance to throw a fade. We played man within that game. We got beat in man coverage too. So right now we get beat at both. It really doesn't matter which one we're playing. We just have to coach it and play it better. End quote. Uh, there's something to be said about that. I think that I agree with Todd Bowles on certainly on some of that. You know, you're getting beaten man. You're getting beaten zone. So it doesn't really matter which one you're running. But I will tell you this. Your team is built to play man coverage. Your team is built to play aggressive up front, man coverage behind it. That is what guys like Carlton Davis do the best. That is the easiest way for your defense to play. That is kind of where you make your 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 money, right? This is the same guy who ran a cover zero against the Los Angeles Rams in the playoffs. And while everybody was roasting him for making that call, I was in here trying to defend him a little bit by saying if Antoine Winfield Jr. doesn't bite on the play action, he's in better position to defend that pass against Cooper Cup, which makes the call the right call and makes the execution bad. Carlton Davis is not a zone cover 
corner. He's never been a zone cover corner. He's a man coverage guy. So to me, you're going to live by the sword. You need to die by the sword. To me, running that much zone late in the game is the equivalent of coaching not to lose, not coaching to win. You coach to win by doing what your players are best at. Even if they're not doing great at it today, it's still what your players are best at. That's what you need to do to win the game. That's my opinion. I'm not an NFL coach. Todd Bowles is, but that is talking about Todd today, and that is our episode. Coming up tomorrow, WTSP Wednesday, James Jarko, Evan Klosky. Evan's going to have plenty to say, I promise you. Make sure you come back for that. In the meantime, if you've got questions, you can leave them in the YouTube comment section. Hit me up on Twitter. Hit James on Twitter, Jarko underscore Bucks, or hit the show at Locked On Bucks. Thank you so much for making Locked On Bucks first listen today and every day. Making us a part of your day, part of your routine. Until we speak again, speak again, please be safe, be kind, fire the cannons. We'll see you next time for another episode of Locked on Bucks, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.